All right, so that's the bell and gasset motor that's going out. We replaced, this will be the second one that we're putting on there in like 24 years, so it's not bad. If you can see, there's a two-ton jack, because the conspiracy theory somebody told me was that uh, the motor sags over years, and that's what causes it to not start, not crank. But like I said, South Chicago told me to take it in and they want to make sure it's the right one and everything. But one thing that I wanted to show you before you take that motor off, I know this is where I have everything at. I actually replaced this also one time. And uh, you can see the new one only had two, not the third one. I started drilling. I said, forget it. I just put it there. But this is the main breaker for it right here. So that shuts off the power to the uh, boiler so there's no power going to the boiler now so now I could take it off and these pumps right here I got uh, radiators on my main floor my second floor this one pump pumps all the way to the second floor this is a bell and gasset one sixth horsepower pump so I shut the power off so I could take this out right here this is like a regular I got to hit it with a screwdriver and it'll loosen this up right here where I can reverse this off and pull the wires out other than that, I'm going to take off the pump from right here and right here. These bolts right here. And there's a tiny Allen in there that I got to show you where to get at. I'm going to leave this housing and this on the impeller. Man, I don't know if I should take the whole thing or take... He asked me to take the pump. I might just take it off from here. I'll just take it off from here and take the whole thing. We'll see what we're going to do as we go along. This is my buddy George, American Refrigeration Heating and Air Conditioning. Good prices, fair prices, and somebody that you could trust. Okay, with the power off, this is the thing going in it. Like I said, this right here, actually I just hit with my hand and a screwdriver to get that spinning the opposite way. Let's see if it's going up. I think it's just going just like that. Yeah, see, you loosen this up. And then you can take the wires off. Like I said, the breaker is off already. So you don't got to worry about these. There's a screwdriver. There's a screw in here for the ground. And this one only had two wires, so there's no ground on this one right here. Look how old that wire is to this house. This house is from 1910. See? So I'm taking these off right here. And then they come right back through here after this is all the way twisted. And then what I'm going to do is put this back on so I don't lose it. How about that? Okay, so I decided that I'm just taking the motor part off. But in order to do that, there's an Allen in here that I got to get off. So let me get my other uh, light so you can see inside there. Okay, I got my flashlight to show you where the Allen needs to come out at. Right inside there. There's two Allen screws inside there in the coupling. So let me turn it so you can see the coupling. I guess I should put my headlight on. Okay, so right here, that's where the um, a screw is that you need to take off right there. And it's a number three Allen screw that you got to fit in there and you got to back off right there. And after you back that number three Allen screw off, you get your big flathead screwdriver and then you back it off the impeller see just comes right off the impeller like that so now when you take these bolts off right here four bolts it'll disconnect all right now to get in here it's going to be a tight squeeze it's a size 13 socket but as you can see my 13 is too long because i got an adapter so i got to get a bigger 13 to fit that or you could use a box wrench all right, there's four bolts. One, two, three, four. Of course, the one all the way in the back is the hardest. It's 13 millimeter, but you need a short socket to fit in between these two. So what I used was I put a freaking Allen wrench in between. Instead of the ratchet, I put an Allen wrench. Put an Allen wrench in there to make it a little bit tighter squeeze. Or I could turn the socket with the Allen wrench. That's how I did it. So I'm going to pop all four of these off right now and it's just slide right out. Get your bottom ones off first and then let it hang on the top two. 
All right, now it's apart. And it should come off. I already loosened that coupling right there. So it should just fall right off. And this sucker is heavy. All right, so I'm going to put the top back on. And then we're going to shoot back over there. What I'm noticing is th this is turning pretty freely. This right here, I can barely turn right here. So maybe it's this that's sticking over here. So I'm going to pull this off also. All right, I think I have to fill the whole thing up. But more than likely, I'm going to have to fill the whole thing up again. Because all the water is coming out with that one. So I'm going to get all these off and I'm going to take this. But well, you see the water coming down already. Now with these big bolts right here, I actually went with the 5 8 to get these off right here. The water's coming out already. I don't know how, if the whole thing is going to drain or what. But uh, I have to put it on later if it did. But the reason why I'm taking these off is because this thing didn't spin freely. And here it comes. There's actually a thing I can fill it back up with up top. Uh, I'll show you when I get to that point because I know I'm going to have to bleed every radiator and go through all this again. I'd rather do this now, uh, seeing that it's just starting to get cold, than when it is cold. So, alright, let me get all these off. Alright, and here we go. I took off the impeller because the impeller seemed like that's what was not moving the uh the motor seemed like it was going fine the impeller seemed like it was stuck there's the impeller part right there at the front and the motor was running freely and this one seemed like it wasn't going so maybe that's what was starting the motor yeah oh my god wtf we're just leaving out and i'm thank god that i took off that impeller and took that impeller in because the impeller was kind of tight to me but i'm no expert heating and air conditioning jack of all trades master of none right so it was so awesome what south chicago heating and air conditioning did they had the clips and everything they plugged the motor in for me and they tried it and they said oh man it sounds like it's kind of you know it's it it, it wasn't making the right sound that they're used to hearing so he grabbed the uh motor itself to see if it would stop and by hand no it was it was still spinning because i got a high velocity this apparently is a high velocity motor to get to the second floor then he put uh, some grips on it you just heard a grinding so he says now nah, the motor's bad and then it was pretty cool because you know, he turned the impeller and uh right next to me was a, a guy that does heat and air conditioning and the guy says hey that that impeller's kind of uh hard and so he turned it by hand too and he says yeah he goes your impeller's kind of tight also you know and that's why i took the impeller in because i was able to turn the motor but not the impeller sure enough i needed an impeller he said you might as well you might as well go with the with the whole system and it's all together already so as soon as we get home i'll show you how it was 715 dollars now i says you know this is the second time i gotta replace it in uh 24 years 25 years so i don't think that that's bad and i mentioned i says well i'm gonna go ahead and replace the boiler in probably two or three years anyways and they says unless the boiler is broken like cracked or leaking there's no sense in replacing the boiler just have it cleaned out so i love south chicago plumbing and heating if you got any old specialty thing or need any uh, uh part for your boiler or furnace or plumbing or grease trap in chicago look up south chicago plumbing and heating they're awesome